still with me in studio, Kathleen Rice, Director, Technology, Media and Telecommunications Practice at Cliff Dacker Hofmeyer, Angus Hay, CTO at Neotel, Andre Hubert, General Manager at MW Business, and Rudolf Miller, Founder and Editor of My Broadband. Rudolf, let's start with you. You deal with these issues every day. Why is Telcom so hesitant? to open up the local local loop. Let's, let's give them a platform without having them here. Yes, indeed, uh, it's no surprise. Internationally, every single incumbent operator fight tooth and nail against local loop unbundling because it will bring competition into the market and it's far nicer to have a monopoly. It's, you can predict more what's going to happen. Uh, you don't know what's going to happen with local loop unbundling. What is competition going to look like? What is your com competition going to do? So one can expect that the incumbent will say no to local loop unbundling. But I have to agree with what Andre said. Um, bring it in a phased approach which is fairly comfortable for Telcom to deal with. If you bring in Bitstream Access, for example, it's a product that they have ready, um, they can roll it out, and the ISPs then will offer services and actually help Telcom to extend their ADSL uh, network, to help them to sign up more ADSL customers. So that's an easy win for the, for the um, industry. It's fairly comfortable for Telcom. It's not a, a big thing that they will say, goodness, what's going to happen? Are they going to steal my high-end customers? And then uh, through that, kind of work up to maybe something bigger. Now, he mentioned Bitstream, and that's one of the four local loop options. What does Bitstream entail, and is it a viable model for the South African market? I think we do believe that it is. Um, Bitstream really just means that the service provider, um, or an ISP in this case, invests in some technology to move um, their network one step closer to the telecom core network. Um, through that process, we will offload some of the traffic from the telecom network. Um, it means an investment from the service provider side. But over time, as the network traffic changes, Telcom will see the benefit of scaling on their core network um, and the internet service providers make that investment to bring their customers closer to the core. Um, it is definitely a recommended step as a first step into the, into the phase. And then as you go through the phasing, eventually Bitstream in one form or another will stay because uh, there will be areas in the country where you know, full unbundling just won't make economical sense. So, you know, hybrid and a balance of these two models into the future would be the way to do it. Angus, what would be there after? If Bitstream works, what's next? Yeah, um, maybe just a, you know, a, a technicality. Um, firstly, to understand that all of this is actually about cost. It's all, all about the cost of delivery of a service. Um, so the, the technologies, the, the, you know, there are four different ways of doing this. There are multiple technologies that, 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 that apply, but ultimately it's about getting a, a cost-based wholesale access mechanism. Um, the, the, the logic is that if you can get a cost-based wholesale access, you can then compete on a retail basis, Ex exactly like happens with, with other aspects of the network. Um, Bitstream probably really doesn't fall into the category of local loop unbundling in a facility sense. It's not really a facility, it's a service. Uh, that said, Bitstream is a, is a very effective wholesale service and it's offered by a number of telcos globally as part of a, a bigger range of services. So our, our position has always been that Bitstream in isolation doesn't really get you much. It might get you a small step towards a better price. Um, and we've already seen some changes in, in pricing on, on the basic IP Connect. Um, but it's not really getting you to the point where you actually have cost-based cost access. Um, and that's really the point, is that a full local loop unbundling um, of, the, of the physical copper so that you can put a different technology onto it really, really gets two things. It gets a commercial model that is cost, that is cost or wholesale based. And secondly, it gets you the ability to deliver different services. Um, it's not so simple when everybody's delivering the same service. One of the things that many South African consumers and, and businesses do not appreciate is that we have a one-size-fits-all type of broadband in South mm -hmm. Africa. We get whatever happens to be there. And the only way you can step out of that paradigm is if you go to a different medium. So, for example, on, on fiber, you can get you know, fantastic broadband, but uh, you can't get it on that physical network. You can't get different technologies on the, on the copper network. And so even in, in copper technology, we have older technology being used in the network. There is potential for upgrade. There's potential for future investment. And I think that absolutely must be encouraged. But the difference between full local loop unbundling and something like Bitstream is that the, 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 the provider that's making use of that local loop unbundling would be able to add their own technology and therefore change the, the competitive landscape. Now, another reason Telcom has cited not looking forward to LLU, they mentioned job losses and these things. When it comes to competition, 
surely the regulatory framework would step in all the regulators to say, well, we'll regulate it as uh, Andre said in a phased approach, and it's not necessarily the death of the incumbent. I, I think that's the advantage of a phased approach rather than a big bang approach. And one of the findings that ICASA made in the recent um, findings document is that it is going to undergo a regulatory assessment, impact assessment, that um, um, LLU will have on the market and um, issues like jobs and jobs losses uh, and the effect on in of uh, increased competition on jobs um, would definitely be something that they would consider as part of their process. And Labour has also made a number of representations as part of this local loop unbundling process. So ICASA will be taking their views on this into account as well. We, we've done quite a lot of work on, on, on looking at some of those things ourselves. In our submissions that we've made, um, in, in the, certainly in the, in, the, in the most recent local loop unbundling process, we, we did some research of our own that, and, and you know, looked into some of these impacts. Um, the issue of jobs is very interesting because um, certainly statistics in a number of countries show us that the total number of jobs in the industry rises dramatically with local loop unbundling. It does not, in fact, drop. Um, there is a question of it may drop in one company and rise in another, but that's competition. Uh, I think that's the whole point, is that one, one, one does see generally a growth in the industry, a growth in the, in the broadband, the ISP industry, when you see local loop unbundling. And unlike our regulator, our labour movements have teeth, and they will not take the hassles. Andre, from your side, um, another mention of smaller ISPs suffering because of local loop unbundling. What's the stance on that? Look, one has to be very careful. Part of the reason for the motivation around phasing is, you know, with IP Connect and then Bitstream, the smaller ISPs, the level of investment that they have to make is not as extreme as when you go the full unbundling route. The technology that Angus was talking about early on is, you know, it's utopian, it's first price, but it comes at a very hefty price. Um, so from an investment point of view, there's a real risk that with full unbundling, you will only have a handful, if that many, of very large corporates that's got the, the deep pockets to build and invest in that level. Um, and it might stifle um, competition where if you have full unbundling with a hybrid, you know, f something like Bitstream, it really enables smaller players um, to still be part of the landscape. And we've certainly seen with uncapped ADSL what that's done for competition and what it's done for growth in the general industry, um, let alone on the consumer side. We've seen a deadline set for Bitstream for November 2012. Are we going to reach this target? Yeah, I think for once I can say I'm actually quite confident that we will. In, in the previous times uh, I've said here that um, no, we're not going to make it and we didn't. But in this case, um, ICASA has stuck to their uh, April deadline for IPC price cuts, which we've seen to come in. So I think in, in November we will see it. Telcom is ready. They've been trialing this product for a long time. Um, so it's good news. I think we can just add as well that um, while it is a bit, maybe a bit scary to open the market uh, for telecom f that, that had a monopoly on the local loop, um, we have seen a massive decline in the fixed line, um, in fixed line subscribers, fixed line numbers in South Africa over the last decade. In fact, it's now as low as the mid-90s. So broadband and ADSL is one of those things that can actually lift these numbers. When somebody has an ADSL line with an uncapped service on top of it, um, they're far less likely to drop that service than when they only had a voice service over it. So this is one of the things. MWeb can actually help Telcom to increase those numbers and to create jobs rather than lose jobs because of a decline in fixed lines. Just to, just to comment on the fixed line numbers because uh, it's in, in, interesting that we haven't seen any, any proper independent counts done recently. Everybody counts the, the one operator's lines and, and, and keeps quoting that as the, as the, <laughs> as the market. Um, I can't give you exact numbers myself, but I can certainly tell you that our estimate is that um, a lot of what has been has, 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 has moved off telecoms network, certainly in the last two years, has been churned to other operators. So because of a number portability, the, the, the statistics exist in the number portability company to see how many number, numbers have actually ported. So you know, there has been a decline, but it's, it's interesting that we're seeing quite a lot of churn there as well. Um, and what that churn is meaning, of course, is that those lines um, are moving across to other technologies as well. They're perhaps moving to, to fiber or wireless and so on. Um, but th there's no doubt that if we want to grow the whole market, um, and, and I think we see this certainly with telecom as well as a, as a wholesale provider of access, is uh, if you want to grow the whole market, you need a very compelling wholesale offering in the market. I guess you brought up other technologies. There've, there's also been questions around unbundling the wireless last mile. 
Yeah, I, I think it's a different kind of discussion, and, and, and often this turns into more of a, a technical discussion than a regulatory one. But the reality is that there are mechanisms for sharing wireless networks that are not quite the same as local loop unbundling. Uh, it's kind of difficult to explain, but you can't kind of unbundle the radio wave. You actually have to go into some equipment. Um, and because of that, there are multiple ways of doing it. So there are um, APNs and the various models for doing that, which are not quite the same as unbundling. But they, 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 they get down to the same thing eventually. It comes down to a wholesale price for a service. Oh, definitely. We should have a de debate around that. Kathleen, before we go, if we miss the November deadline again, is there legal recourse at some point to say, ICASA, you've had the time, regulator, you've had the time, please, 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 let's start unbundling? It's a difficult one. I can't see an application to the High Court succeeding to compel ICASA to proceed with um, local loop unbundling. Um, but it seems likely that the November deadline will be met and the rest, I suppose, will be in the discretion of ICASA and they would have an argument to say that they do want to conduct a regulatory impact assessment um, and do that properly before they proceed with the rest of local loop unbundling. Gentlemen, 30 seconds each. Local loop unbundling is not there yet, but a couple of quick wins. What can we do in the meantime? Angus, let's start with you. Um, well, we, we certainly are looking forward to Bitstream. We do think that Bitstream is important. Um, and in parallel, we have a, we have a, a legal process ongoing. Um, so certainly we will proceed with the legal process. Andre? Look, I think the, the key thing is that we drive to get that date stuck to this year, um, meet that November deadline. Bitstream is, is a step in the right direction. Another step would be Naked ADSL, unbundling the voice component uh, for the consumers. It's currently just a tax that's being paid, um, and I think that would make a, a huge difference in uh, stimulating growth. Um, Naked ADSL, as Andre said, is an easy win, can be done. Um, wholesale price cuts, although there's been a 30% reduction in IPC cuts, doesn't mean it has to be the last one. We've seen it filter down very quickly to consumers, so that's a, an easy quick one. And obviously Bitstream access, but also Bitstream access at an affordable rate. It can't be Bitstream access at far higher rates than IPC, it must be at an affordable rate that ISPs can build nice services that's affordable to consumers. Thank you. Kathleen, Angus, Andre Rudolf, thank you very much. Thank you. That's all we have for you on this month's edition of Talco Talk. Until next month, from Nina Tashiakops, it's goodbye and thank you for watching.